Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is 16 Candies by Envy Born Games. This is a three to four player game that takes roughly 20 to 30 minutes to play and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game, 16 Candies, you're going to be getting a deck of cards, some tokens, which are basically candies, in the first player marker. And you're going to be hopefully gathering the most of one type of candy before your opponents. This is a game that's kind of like, I guess like blackjack mixed with like poker, um, all filled with a candy sub theme where you're trying to keep as many candies as you have for as long as you possibly can. If you're the last person with candies alive by the end of the game, or with candies, maybe not alive, but with candies, then, then you are the winner. We'll talk about the setup, we'll talk about how to play, and then of course my review. When setting up the game 16 candies, the first thing that you do is you're going to shuffle the deck of cards. You're then going to draw one card from the top of the deck and place it face up next to the deck. That is considered the discard pile. Each player playing the game is going to be getting three cards, as well as 16 candies. You're going to be dealing out these little candy tokens and giving them to players and leaving the rest in the center pool of the play area within reach of all players. You can choose, if you would like, to use real candy as opposed to these tokens, and I do recommend it because real candy is tasty. Go ahead and take this first player marker and give it to one player in the game, and then you're ready to begin. It's that simple. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up, in fact. When it's your turn, you will have three cards that you can arrange in order on your turn to kind of move them around and form a certain candy lineup. You're always going to want to form your lineup to mostly, most of the time, be the same cards uh, of the same color type, or if you have a wild, then they just kind of attach together. Because you're trying to have the most candies of a specific color over any other opponent. You're going to choose to do one of two actions. Action one is you can go ahead and draw and discard, and you can choose to draw and discard from the deck to the discard pile or the discard pile into your hand to the discard pile. Let me give you an example. I could draw from the deck here, take this card here, decide I don't want this card and place it into the discard pile. Or instead of that, I could have drawn from the discard pile here and chosen from my hand to discard into the discard pile. That's one action you can choose either or though. The other action you can choose is you can call. Call like something you would do in like uh, like staying in blackjack or calling for poker. In which case you're like, I'm done, I'm good. Each other player in the game is gonna get one turn when someone calls. At which case, every single player has arranged their hand and is going to place it face down on the table. And then everybody is going to reveal. And when you reveal, you're gonna try and reveal the most possible candies. Now, on these cards here are two sets of candies, for the most part. The top and bottom portion, which can be arranged to your liking. Uh, when you have the top, uh, uh, when, you're, when you're trying to arrange your candies, you wanna make sure that you arrange them so that way the most value of candies is available to you at the end of the game because you're trying to score them up and have more than your opponents, especially when you're calling, right? Um, and so if I go, okay, I have five, six, seven, eight, nine candies here. Each other player is going to reveal as well. They'll look at their hand that they have hopefully organized correctly, and they're gonna say, okay, oh, I have six, seven, eight, nine candies as well, and they would reveal. And then this player as well would reveal and go, oh, I happen to have uh, four, five, six, seven candies. At which case, you will check the rule book. Now there's a bunch of things that actually can happen in the game, and the rule book kind of explains what the different options are. So when you call, or say I've got candy, um, the highest hand, uh, the player that called candy, if you have the highest hand, you're gonna get two additional candies. So if you call, you're like, I've got the best, and you actually do have the best, you'll score bonus candy. However, if it's the middle hand, you lose candy. So if you're not the lowest, but you're also not the highest, you'll lose candy as the person who calls. And if you have the lowest hand, you're gonna lose your card penalty plus one. Card penalties are these black licorice tokens in the top left-hand side of when you play your cards. And no matter how you organize them, it's gonna be in the top left-hand side. You're going to add them up and you're going to lose the relevant amount of candies from here. If you're playing with real candies, you can eat them, however. And then what happens to the people who don't call? Well, if you have the highest hand, nothing happens if you don't call. If you have a middle hand, nothing happens. But if you have the lowest hand or tied, you're going to um, 
lose the card penalty, which is not super good. It's the same thing that happens. You'll take the top left hand side of these cards here. And if you have uh, five, you'll lose five candies from your pool. And then once that happens, the first player marker will switch. Everybody's going to take their cards, shuffle them back up and then form another round of play. And you're shuffling all the cards up here, dealing out cards to each player as well as one face up, etc., etc. And the round repeats itself. And that's basically how to play. There is a few other little additional notes here if you happen to get a set at any point in your hand. And what is a set? Well, a set is if you have a four, five, and a six of one color. You can call out, I've got candy, at which point you basically will win the game and your opponents will suffer the consequences. So there is a chance that you can actually win the game before somebody calls, I've got candy, in which case you're going to check the rules and see what happens to the other players. Technically, I think they lose their candy amount. But anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Drawing cards, debating when you want to call, moving and organizing your hand based on what you have available to you in the candy types. And then always uh, don't forget that there are wild ones and the wild ones are pretty straightforward as opposed to two different types there's just one different type in which case they always have three but the penalty is always two if you lose so that's the game 16 candies what do i think so like i said at the beginning of the video this is a poker type game where you are drawing cards and you are attempting to create the best hand but as opposed to just you know drawing once and then laying down you're actually going to be able to continue and push your luck as well as make sure that your opponents don't get too good of a hand themselves. And remember, you're always able to draw from either the discard pile or the deck here. And you have to kind of see what your opponents are going for. If you wait too long, somebody might end up getting that four, five, six combo, which will mean they win the game. However, if no one gets that four, five, six combo and somebody calls, each other player will get an extra turn. Calling is kind of dangerous in a way because you are have a lot to gain but also each other player gets a bonus turn that isn't you. So you have to kind of be aware of when that might occur and, and, and like how detrimental is it to your hand. So uh, calling can be valuable just as well as not calling. Choosing to make sure that cards get covered over as opposed to your opponents getting that extra card they might need and waiting till next turn to call is also useful as well. This is actually a lot more of a strategic game than I was thinking. When I first saw this little candy card game, it's a tiny little card game about kids eating candy, I was not super thinking um, a, a, a moderate amount of strategy for this game, but there is quite a bit. People who like poker are going to like this game, or like that kind of blackjack feel. Uh, the idea that you can kind of bring it into your family and start playing that as well is a nice touch. I played this with two groups of friends now for a, a lot of games actually and they really really enjoyed it and I actually got really really into it and I wasn't sure I was going to get into a game like this but I did and I really really like this game. Uh, this is going to be those the games for like those poker fanatics out there that enjoy that but want a light sub theme, want something that's a little different, a little bit with a push your luck type of thing. Um, the ability to kind of even like the game 13, I don't know if you ever played 13 but it's, it's similar to that one in that case, basically a lot of deck of card games but with the also additional bonus of being able to flip the cards upside down and kind of formulate your hand and being stuck with cards in your hand you might not want or a certain way because you didn't flip them in time uh, and having to play them down or having to choose certain strategies like, I don't want to reveal all the strategies because there's quite a few, but you can flip your cards if you don't think you're going to win with a huge hand for some reason. Um, you can flip them to the lower end of the penalty pool, so that way you don't suffer as much of a candy loss to your penalty. Whereas if you're going high, somebody else might be higher, in which case you will lose a good amount of candy. And so yeah, there's this, this like kind of back and forth and a lot of decision making to make. It's a very light card game with not a whole lot of cards in the game. I guess my main thing about this game is I'm a big guy, I have big hands. Picking up these little tiny pieces is uh, insanely frustrating. So what the rules say, what I strongly agree, is you can get your own candy at home I prefer M&Ms, but you can get what you want and eat those. You get a big pile here and deal out the candies and play this game. Uh, everyone at the table agreed as well, especially the guys that had big hands like me. But everybody overall thoroughly enjoyed the game. It's a lot of fun. It's a light game. It is exactly what you imagine it is to be based on what I have explained, at least in my opinion. But there's a lot more depth and strategy than I think most people realize with this little title here, 16 Candies. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game. If you'd like to take a look 
at the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and choose to pick this title up if you would like. You can. You can also, if you really would like, and you've seen more than one of our videos here before, hit that subscribe button if you think we've earned it, and of course the notification button if you want to see more uh, indie games and published games and Kickstarter games as well. We produce videos all the time. We have a live stream on Wednesdays on whatnot, every other Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, and we have it on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to eating your 16 candies next time. I really want some candy now.